That sound never gets old. One short beep. The computer's way of telling me all the key components seem to be operating as expected. Everything's okay. A pure square wave, or at least as close to a square wave as is possible given the physical constraints of our universe. In this case resonating at 891 hertz, just a little bit sharp of an A natural. It's a noticeable difference, but it's not overly dissonant. To me it evokes the warmth of a detuned synth pad. I don't know if all post beeps are that same pitch, my memory certainly thinks so. Either way it's music to my ears. The sound of a successful post is pure nostalgia. I hear it and I'm a broke teenager in the 90s again, desperately hoping the disparate combination of components I've cobbled together from car boot sales and hand-me-downs will work this time. Friends and family all knew if they had some old computer to dispose of, I was the weird kid who would gladly take it. And that's how I got most of my computers as a child. Starting with a very old 8088 machine to a slightly less old seller on 300A, with countless other systems and parts in between. I spent a lot of my childhood and teenage years waiting to hear that post beat. Hoping. Those two seconds between hitting the power button and hearing the beep stretching out for years. The spike in tension on hearing the beep start, and then the relief on learning that it's a short beep and only one. Tension. And release like all good music. One short beat, the PC boots, endless possibility, everything's going to be okay. Uh-oh. Let's see what's wrong with it now. It was at this point I discovered this piece of the case is removable. I said this piece is removable. There we go. Wish I'd noticed that earlier, but oh well. Having had good luck with reseating the CPU previously, I decided to remove everything from the motherboard and give it a good blowjob and brushy brushy. Sure enough, that was all it took and I've not had any post failures since. While I am enjoying the sweet sound of the post beep telling me my cheap Pentium 2 is working, I've got four copies of Half-Life that aren't going to play themselves. Unfortunately, this PC doesn't quite meet all of Half-Life's minimum requirements. It needs Windows, and a 400 megabyte hard disk, and a mouse. I don't have any of those things. Yet. I've picked up Windows 98, SE of course, an 8 gigabyte compact flash card, an IDE adapter, and a cheap mouse. So the adapter takes a standard IDE cable and the compact flash card goes in like this. That, that's a bit tight. So full disclosure, I've never used compact flash before. By the time I got into flash storage, MMC cards were already the norms. So why won't this go in? It's upside down, of course, right. For testing purposes, I'm just gonna stick this back in its anti-static bag and leave it flapping loose in the case. I'll mount it properly once I know it works. Probably. We have signs of life. Just gonna go with the first auto-detected drive settings and hope for the best. Time to install Windows 98. Huh, so that's what color the case should be. Good to know. Here we go. Come on. Ah, the Windows 98 loading screen. Pump that nostalgia directly into my veins. And... We're in. Yes. Right, time for Quake. Considering I own four copies of Half-Life, Quake was actually my favourite 90s shooter. Ah, oh, that doesn't look right. 
Uh, that's more like it. That's actually amazing. It must be 20 years since I last played this game. Yet those console commands are right there, burned into my brain hole. Seeing as I'm not locked in a secret government facility under the Nevada desert, with nothing to do but play games and be subjected to cruel and unusual punishments, I'm going to stick to normal difficulty. No pro quake today. This is a special occasion for me. This is actually the first time I've played this game with Trent Reznor's epic score. I'm a die-hard Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails fan, yet due to some weirdness with the PC I had back in the 90s, CD audio in games was really hit and miss. I remember the original Tomb Raider had all the in-game dialogue as CD audio tracks, and it would always be really out of sync with the visuals. Whereas in the case of Quake, I'd get no CD audio at all. No soundtrack. I know the CD drive was connected properly, as I could listen to CDs in Windows, it just didn't like games. Instead, I used to put my Quake CD in an ordinary CD player and listen to the soundtrack that way, which was how I discovered Nine Inch Nails. In fact, I've just realised I can trace the majority of my current music taste to this very game. <laughs> I love this little detail. The Nine Inch Nails logo is on the nail gun ammo boxes. <laughs> wow, playing now with the soundtrack is like discovering a whole new dimension to a game I know so well. It's akin to the change from 2D to 3D. On paper it shouldn't work. The majority of this game has a fantasy aesthetic, showing its Dungeons and Dragons roots. Giving it an industrial metal soundtrack seems so wrong, yet feels so right. Just listen to that. Mr. Reznor is truly the king of atmospheric layered soundscapes. So my plan was to play a couple of hours on each game, get a good hit of nostalgia, and see if they could live up to my memory. However, Quake, the first game I played, totally sucked me in, and I accidentally ended up playing it right through to completion. So I suppose that answers the question, does it live up to my memory? It's so frantic. Even in the early levels, the pace had me on edge. It's worlds away from the modern cover shooters, always breaking up the action with chest high walls and regenerating health. It's no wonder boomer shooters are making a comeback, they're actually fun. And now the worst part of Quake. And I don't mean the lack of a boss fight, I mean this. Damn it, there's a dead shambler in the way of the point I'm trying to make. Just give me a second. Right, I'm going to go full easy mode this time. And I'll just lure this shambler out of the way. There, you see that? Your triumphant victory, the last thing you see in this game, and he's standing on one leg, perfectly still, holding the axe! I'm pretty sure I was holding a gun when I went through that slip gate. And as for the pose, that's literally the first frame of animation of the player model. See, Quake doesn't have a modern skeletal animation system. So this, this is the Quake equivalent of a T pose. I know Quake's development was troubled and it was rushed to finish, but could they not have spent that little bit of time to fix the game's climax? Who ends something like this?
So I didn't even get to Half-Life, Quake was just too damn fun. Next time I'm going to clean up the case and maybe even play a copy of Half-Life or two. Dude's got amazing balance though.